In this lesson, we're just going to have a quick introduction to titrations. So the objective that goes along with this topic is to identify the equivalence point in a titration based on the amounts of the titrant and analyte, assuming that the reaction goes to completion. Um, so the scale that goes along with this topic is to represent chemical phenomenon using appropriate graphing techniques, including correct scale and unit. This is a, just a quick little funny picture I found over what chemistry is really like, and this is chemistry without exceptions, okay? So if, if we got rid of all of the exceptions in chemistry, this is how big the book would be. <laughs> all right, so titrations. Titrations may be used to determine the concentration of an analyte in a solution. So the titrant, you're gonna know the concentration of that species, and it's gonna react specifically and quantitatively with the analyte. So the analyte is going to be the one that's the unknown. Now, with titrations, you have to know with um, what your analyte is and your titrant. Your titrant will just be the known concentration, and your analyte will be the unknown concentration. So what's going to happen is there's going to be an equivalence point um, that's from the titration, and it occurs when the analyte is totally consumed by the reactant species in the titrant. So generally, we are going to use something called an indicator, um, and it helps us change the property, for example, color, that occurs when the equivalence is reached. Um, and so because generally what happens is in an acid-base reaction, it's all clear. You can't see particles. You can't see anything that would indicate that um, you've reached that equivalence point. So we use an indicator that just you just do a few drops of it. Um, and usually we use something called phenyl phaline. Um, and so generally, if you see a titration, they'll show you that pink color of the solution. That's from the phenyl phaline. Um, and it helps us um, helps us understand when it's reached that equivalence point. Um, so once it stops there, then we can start measuring stuff. And you basically just do solution stoichiometry. Um, and so this observable event is called the endpoint. OK, and it's really fun to do titrations, especially when you're adding drop by drop of your titrant into your analyte. And you want to get a pale pink color if you're going to be working with phenyl phaline. So you see a picture right here. Um, so this right here is going to be your titrant. And then this solution right here is going to be your analyte. So you're going to be adding drop by drop of your titrant um, into the um, Erlenmeyer flask of your analyte and you have to swirl each time. Technically, you're supposed to do drop by drop, um, but what's going to happen is if you started here, then it's going to drop, you know, a lot more. And so and once you start seeing a pink, but then disappears, you're no, you know, you're getting super close. And so here, this is the end point that we want if we're using phenyl failing. And then if it becomes like a hot pink color, you've gone too far. OK. All right, so calculating the concentration. Um, so again, this is just using solution stoichiometry. Um, looking at this equation, it looks a little scary at first, but basically what's happening, this is um, just going to be like a net ionic equation. Um, so if we let's say we wanted to find the concentration of the Fe2 positive solution, uh, we would use um, the permanganate solution, this right here, of known concentration to the Fe2 positive. So we'll first start off as that it will be colorless, but when the solution turns purple, it means that there is no Fe2 positive remaining um, to react with that um, permanganate. And so that would mean that the equivalence point of the reaction um, occurred. Now, let's say we made it into a problem. We can, again, use solution stoichiometry. We can solve for the unknown concentration of this iron 2 positive. Um, so look at this example. Let's say we have 50 milliliters solution of the iron 2 positive. It's going to be titrated with a 0 0.002 molar solution of potassium permanganate. So we need to find the known concentration. We need to find the unknown concentration of the iron 2 positive if 20 milliliters of permanganate is required. So what's happening is your Fe2 positive is going to be in that Erlenmeyer flask, and you've added 20 milliliters of, per, of the potassium permanganate into your Fe2 positive unknown concentration solution, and then that's when that color turns purple. 
So at that point, you got to know how much was entered um, into your analyte. So here, first things first, since we know the concentration and we know the volume, we can, um, we can find the moles, okay? So here, 0 0.0020 molarity. We're solving for moles. And um, this is 20 milliliters. Got to convert this to liters. So 0 0.0020 liters. You should end up getting 0 0.0 four zeros for zero moles okay um, and this is going to be of the permanganate okay now the reason why i know i'm working with permanganates because let's say we know since this is 0 0.0020 molarity if this breaks up into k positive plus the mn04 that positive is not supposed to be there, I apologize. Um, and this becomes minus. This is all one to one to one, so this should be 0 0.0020 as well, and this should be the same as well, as well based off our molarity um, ratios. So here, now that we have the moles, we can just do some solution stoichiometry. So here, 0 0.0040s, um, molarity, excuse me, moles, of MnO4 minus, we know the mole ratio is one to five. So for every one mole, there's five moles of Fe2 positive. Um, you should end up getting 0 0.0020 moles of Fe2 positive. And so since we know that it was 50 milliliters, we're going to divide by the liters of that. So 0 0.050 liters. And then, because remember, we want to find the concentration, so we'll do moles over liters. And so here you'll end up getting 0 0.0040 molarity of this Fe2 positive concentration. And honestly, it's just solution stoichiometry. You guys have done stoichiometry since week two um, and that should um, that's how we'll be able to solve those unknown concentrations if we have a known concentration and the volumes involved.